Hi, I'm Vic. Welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. And what do we have here? We have a Galil ARM. Uh, it's a semi-automatic civilian version of the ARM. And uh, strangely enough, it's being me being reunited with an old acquaintance. Um, <laughs> I would have handled this rifle before it ended up in this collection, uh, around about 1984. Uh, I used to work for the uh, IMI distributor in the UK and uh, this is a semi-automatic sporter um, before the, uh, the 1986 Hungerford bill where all semi-automatic rifles were removed from a, a civilian ownership in the UK. So this uh, escaped destruction. Um, one thing that's wrong with it is it doesn't have the correct magazine on, it's got an AK magazine. But that's, uh, as a demonstrator, it's fine. Um, the Galil uh, was touted as a, um, a very reliable assault rifle uh, in Israeli IDF service. Uh, this would have been really a sort of a score automatic come designated marksman rifle because it had some uh, capability of sustained fire, mainly not due to a heavy barrel, but because it has a bipod. The other rifles in service would be the AR, which is just the uh, assault rifle version, or the a SAR, which is the shortened barrel version of it. The SARs tended to have a black um, plastic front handguard, no provision for a bipod, and the SAR would be the same, but with a shortened barrel, uh, probably about a, a 13 inch barrel. Um, there were various versions. There's micro Galils as well. There was even a one in 30 carbine uh, caliber, uh, which was uh, to replace M1 carbines in Israeli police service, but it didn't really catch on. I have seen several of those as uh, deactivated surplus in Germany, but non, uh, non recently. But if I see one, we'll film it and let you guys have a look. Okay, Galil derived from the AK because the file in Israeli service and the heavy barrel file, which was the squad automatic, uh, was deemed to be unreliable in the sandy conditions uh, in which it was used. Uh, so the three main um, small arms in Israeli service back then would have been the Uzi submachine gun, the file infantry version, and the heavy barrel file as a squad automatic. That was later supplemented with the uh, FN Mag, uh, Mag 58, um, and the file was taken out of service, replaced with the Galil, and also the M16 and M4, which seemed to actually be issued in greater numbers. I know when I visited Israel, the M16 and M4s were seen in greater numbers, even in the 1980s. Um, recently, um, it's, the Galil has been removed completely from service with the IDF, and a lot of them are being offered up as surplus. I've seen thousands in warehouses, uh, some of which are in appalling condition, some of which are hardly used. Okay, so you guys in the US might get them as parts kits sometime soon. What's great about the Galil? Well, it was lauded as being fully ambidextrous. You could cock it from the left or from the right. The magazine release could be released from the right, push forward and it drops out. This isn't the correct magazine, so it doesn't drop clear. Or from the left. The selector, there is a selector on the left. This being the semi-automatic version, it's only fire and safe. And the selector is also on the right, standard AK. It has a folding buttstock. It's quite compact. The bipod folds up into the handguard. The bipod is also a wire cutter over the wire and pulled down to cut. And the one thing that was always much lauded was that in IDF service, uh, soldiers drinking Coca-Cola um, or other soda from a bottle would use the lips of a magazine to lever open the bottle, which damaged the magazine. So Israel Galili designed it so that the magazine retaining catches would double as a bottle opener. And uh, some of the uh, promo um, movies that I've seen uh, show that in action. As I said before in our army, we have 30% of our soldiers are left-handed. 
So we designed the gun so that we have a changing lever on the right side and on the left side. The same for the magazine, magazine cache. On the right side, magazine cache. On the left side, cocking handle. On the right side, cocking handle. On the left side, holding back. To the right, holding back. To the left. I'm firing from the hip, from the shoulder, from all kinds of positions of the... But to prevent the soil from spoiling the magazine lids, we have also a special bottle opener one. On the right side, also on the left side. <laughs> this is to prevent spoiling magazines. In 1984, I attended the very first IMI Armourers course in Israel as part of the UK team. Here's my friend Pat Walker, myself, Colin Greenwood, the editor of Guns Review magazine, and right at the back, Israel Galili himself. Here we can see Galili firing an ARM on one of the demonstration days, virtually copying movement for movement the same demo that he did back in 1974. Here he is firing an Uzi carbine. And here is Ephraim Yari, what part of the training team who went on to be director of special operations and special weapons for IMI later did. Here's one of the very rare Stanag mag adapters for an ARM. This is the certificate I gained at the end of the course. I still proudly display it on the wall of my office back home. And here we can see a Galil sniper rifle, weighs as much as an LMG, terrible gun I thought. A Galil hunter, no flash hider, wooden stock. And a Galil AR with scope in civilian hands. Israel Galili was quite a comedian here. He showed us a photograph of a, a specialized Galil built for female members of the IDF. As you can see, it fits perfectly. Also, when I did an armorous course in 1984 in Israel, uh, Israel Galili was the guy who sh taught us um, on the Galil, on the Desert Eagle, and on the Uzi system. Um, he did the full demonstration, firing the gun until it was red hot, dumping it into water, um, opening soda bottles with the gun, um, firing at, at 25 feet into half inch um, steel plates with ball ammunition and seeing that it pierced it. Also grenade launching, he was uh, quite a daredevil, uh, quite entertaining at the time. Okay, so that's the Galil, it strips the same as an AK, so I'm not going to go over the stripping of it, but uh, we're going to bring you the rest of the Galil family at a later date and also go over the many, many iterations of the, uh, the Uzi, not just the Uzi, but the mini Uzi and the micro Uzi and the Uzi pistol, but all the various different models in between that you may not have seen, it was available not just in 9mm, but in 9mm by 21mm for the Italian civilian market, um, 41 Action Express, 45 ACP, there was a 22 caliber adapter for it, but there was also a select fire closed bolt version well before this new uh, ultimate Uzi that seems to be coming out the market at the moment. So we're going to go over a lot of Israeli um, long arms and submachine guns uh, and go over some of the legacy weapons that the Israelis used over the years as well. Um, so this is Vic from the Armourers Bench. Please like, share and subscribe and we'll see you later.